Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. In this video, we'll be talking about this active weather battle zone that's setting up across the United States right now. For Stuck Ridge in the Southeast bringing a rare late February heat wave along with troughing in the West is bringing a major winter storm to parts of Northern States. We're gonna talk about everything you need to know in this video. Let's go ahead and dive right in and what we have to talk about today and then we'll go throughout what's going to happen this week as far as winter weather, severe weather, and also the future climate. We got a battle zone of weather ongoing like we mentioned in the intro. So there was just quite a bit going on here. We'll explain it all in this video. First talk about the overview, then we'll transition over into the winter storm this week, severe weather, and then we'll talk about the uh, just the big old heat wave in the southeast at least for this time of year and what the future climate could look like. So here is going to be tomorrow. Now you're going to start to notice that the old clipper system that uh, impacted parts of northern states uh, is going to be moving out. It's going to impact parts of the northern Great Lakes on Tuesday. But then snow already begins to build in, overspreading much of the northwestern states and also northern plains, parts of South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Maybe even northern Illinois could get a brief shot of snow uh, Tuesday night. So we have this low that's going to traverse out of the Rockies, and you can start to notice that the uh, low pressure is down to 995 millibars. So not a completely deep system. It's sort of a very broad scale kind of system. But this low will sort of uh, die off, and a new one will take over to the west. And you're going to start to notice on Wednesday, uh, most of the day Wednesday into Thursday, you notice a big old widespread area of winter precip from the Rockies, over into Northern Plains, up in Midwest, Great Lakes, and into the Northeast. And you also see uh, sleet and freezing rain. There even could be some potentially significant travel impacts with that freezing rain. We'll talk about the totals here in just a second. But then this will move off towards the east. And, uh, you know, it'll eventually sort of be out of our hair by Friday morning. Some of this activity could remain in parts of the Northeast uh, early Friday morning. But that will be sort of old news by the afternoon. And then high pressure will settle in behind that with maybe a brief, another shot of snow. Uh, by the weekend. And then uh, you also notice this, okay? If, if you watch in the Western states, if you're going to be living in the Western states, this is going to be really interesting for you because you notice uh, this is our system that's going to be ejecting out of the Rockies here. Um, you know, you see kind of these dancing low pressure centers that's going to be sort of just moving out. But you notice that sort of how widespread the snow is in, in, area, in states like California and Nevada. You notice how widespread that is. That's not pretty typical for uh, the state. So there could be the potential for some low elevation snow in parts of California. So it's complicated for, especially for areas that are below 500 foot elevation. But it is a really interesting kind of pattern that's setting up there. So uh, for those of you who are, you may be California and the foothills or even the valley, some to, to keep in mind that not only will there be the chance for some prolonged heavy precip, uh, but also maybe uh, maybe a little bit of snow, especially, of course, in the Sierras. The mountains are going to see the heaviest snow. It's pretty typical this time of year. Nothing that's unusual. But that system will move off, and there could be another couple of systems that move in that may bring a very similar type deal. So very dynamic, very interesting, and very rare pattern that's going to be uh, settling into the western states at least in the next week or so. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. And let's talk about snow totals, because that's going to be something that I think a lot of people are, are interested in. It's something that's going to be really important. So let's say we look at the National Blend of Models, and let's say we look at NDFD. So this is basically a, a blend of a lot of models. So this is a blend of American models, you know, GFS, NAM, uh, some of the high-resolution models, the European, the Canadian, you know, a whole bunch of, of models compiled into one, basically an ensemble, pretty much. We can look at this as that. So you're going to notice that as we start into Tuesday, all this snow coming down here. This, this is the first wave right here. This is just wave number one right there that could bring a few inches of snow from Montana into parts of North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota, Wisconsin, maybe the UP of Michigan. But then that's not all of it. Here comes uh, wave number two. This is going to be your big one right here. So you can see midnight central time. Okay, a lot of these areas could have maybe seven, maybe eight inches of snow on the ground in parts of the parts of South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. And then as we go to midnight on Friday, look how much more snow has fallen. 
So that's going to be a pretty interesting type system. Now, this is being a little bit more conservative than uh, the NDFD, and we'll take a look at that. Now, I want to mention this. This is not all the way out. This is not including the entirety of the event. For the Western sections, like the, like the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Wyoming, that's going to be pretty much the entirety of the event. But areas like Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, yeah, the UP Michigan as well, not entirely complete. But even then, Snow Tolls probably won't change a whole lot. But you begin to notice here uh, in parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin how snow totals there uh, could easily exceed uh, 20 inches in here. I mean, lots of snow that could easily fall here. And the Winston Warning in some Minnesota by, issued by the Twin Cities has mentioned uh, some uh, localized totals of two feet or maybe even a little bit more. And even the Minneapolis, the Twin Cities area is in that bullseye. For the highest snow totals and there can even be some locally uh, or some local blizzard conditions in the area so that's with wind gusts that could exceed 40 to 50 miles per hour in a lot of areas so do be prepared for not only just the heavy snow but also potential blizzard conditions in this area as well wednesday and thursday so gonna be a big event really big event that's gonna settle in here to the northern tier of the united states into the great lakes region and maybe even also Northeast. We'll take a look at the Northeast before we look at um, at uh, ice holes. And you can see even a lot of that snow working into parts of Northeast. Of course, uh, you know Canada's no not exempt from this as well. You know parts of Ontario and Quebec are not exempt from this. Just what the NDFD has out there. So, uh, and for you Canadians, you know we don't really do a whole lot of Canadian forecasting, but you're obviously also going to get a lot of the snow as well, particularly in parts of uh, southwestern Ontario something to uh to look out for so be prepared for that not going to be as heavy as it is back off to west parts of minnesota wisconsin but uh, that's going to be definitely an interesting event here so let's take a look at the uh service ice accumulation off the blend of models now i do think this is being a little bit conservative but i do think that over here in uh these areas is going to see probably the highest accumulation of that now i do particularly think if i mar we'll mark this out in say aqua color as far as the highest Accumulation is probably going to be somewhere right in here in southern Michigan, so basically from Lake Michigan over towards uh, Ontario, you know, towards the Windsor area. So something to, to look out for there. So if you have any ideas of traveling, you're really going to want to monitor the potential for uh, some significant impacts to traveling. You can see a lot of these areas here could easily pick up. Uh, you know, quarter inch, maybe even some areas locally half an inch, according to the NWS NDFD projection. And also areas like southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, not quite making its way down to Chicago. Of course, it could still be a little bit of shift in the uh, swath of freezing rain. So areas, you know, in northern parts of the Chicago area, some of the monitor, but as far as, you know, downtown areas to the south, uh, probably not going to be, you know, a big kind of a deal for the area. So... Uh, that's going to be definitely something to, to look out for. So again, if you have any ideas of travel, module conditions, and follow the advice of uh, you know, the weather service and also uh, local officials as well as far as travel. I personally do not recommend it, but I'm not someone to, you know, give, to say yes or no to that. That is something that uh, local weather service offices and also you know, emergency management and officials are going to have to tell you. And of course, you know, it's common sense, but just putting that out there. So that's the deal with this winter storm. Let's go ahead and zoom out here. Actually, so let's go to the central uh, states here. And I'll talk about what um, what Wednesday looks like. Because I know this has sort of been something we've been talking about. Not here on YouTube. I haven't had any time this weekend to make any videos, unfortunately. But there is a margin risk out there for parts of Northeast Texas, Southeast Oklahoma, and the parts of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Now, this is, you know, basically from... Uh, west of the architects to the mid-south region now this is going to change you know i think maybe they could expand this off to the north a little bit in the parts of central and eastern oklahoma given recent model guidance but uh this is what it is right now so if we were to take a look here on the HPLR model and look at sort of what the projection looks like as far as radar now we're gonna have to go a little bit out here so here it is so the her does project that some of this activity could begin to develop here into parts of Oklahoma and Texas. Now, a lot of activity is forecast to be sub-severe, so not producing 50 mile per hour wind gust or one inch hail. 
But then as you go throughout time, you will begin to notice that this these ones kind of grow a little bit and uh, more do form uh, over here into parts of eastern Oklahoma, even into Missouri. Now, I think anywhere really south of this line is, you know, south of this little line right here is going to be the potential for severe storms. I think it's going to be the greatest potential there as instability is going to be relatively marginal because really when, when, when you come to look at it, okay, when you look at the dew points, they are over mixed like crazy. The the theta E advection and, and, and bringing the moisture up into uh, the region is not the greatest and plus a lot of this moisture is over mixed by the warm temperatures and, and, and everything's just factoring in for not a lot of destabilization in the low levels. So a lot of storms you know, could be strong, some uh, thunder and lightning and gusty winds and some hail, maybe a brief tornado, but I don't really expect this to be as bad as what it was initially thought to be. Uh, a couple days ago, you know, we, we saw a lot of the model trends and you can look at it on Twitter where we have a lot of information out there and where this was looking potentially maybe in like a significant event for parts of the deep south. But as recent trends have shown, that just doesn't appear to be the case anymore right now. Of course, there could still be some changes, but we're not expecting much really uh, with these change with uh, how close we are. We're not expecting a whole lot. So still worried to be weather aware. Uh, starting Wednesday morning into uh, during the day Wednesday for parts of Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, South Missouri, Northern Mississippi, Northern Louisiana, West Tennessee, and Western Kentucky and Southwest Illinois. So I'm going to at least be on the lookout for uh, some thunderstorms, maybe a few of these that could be strong to severe, producing some gusty winds, maybe some hail. Can't rule out maybe a couple of tornadoes across a broad area. Uh, on Wednesday, so that's just kind of deal as far as severe storms. Usually not as in depth as I like to go as far as that, but because it doesn't look really that big of a deal anymore, it's kind of like you know how much farther can I go with that. So let's uh, finish this video off with kind of what I I've been sort of looking at here for quite some time. We are in a quite favorable pattern for these troughs to move from uh, the Pacific and the Rockies and also the uh, Northwest to uh, slide through the contiguous United States of level 48 here. So this is gonna be our, tr this is gonna be our really just embedded short wave at this point, just kind of a ripple in the jet stream. Uh, it used to be its own cutoff low, but now it's just pretty much a ripple in the jet stream uh, for Wednesday. Uh, and yes, dynamic support will be quite strong. You know, there will be really good shear with this system, but if you don't have a lot of instability, uh, you're not going to get the most out of that. So uh, that will be that system there. And then, you know, we'll have this bigger trough that kind of this long wave that ejects out on Wednesday and Thursday. This is going to be primarily for winter weather, not going to be a you know, severe weather deal with this system. Uh, so south there could be some thunderstorms, but nothing that we're expecting to be anything huge. Uh, but then, you know, we had this dominant uh, ridge that is a high pressure that's sitting out here in the southeastern states and the Gulf and the Atlantic here. And we'll talk about that, what that's going to become uh, in the next little bit. But you start to notice we get a pretty favorable pattern here from multiple troughs to eject out of southern Rockies and moving to Central and Southern United States. And this is going to be potentially an interesting setup for uh, some disturbed weather across the uh, across anywhere in the level 48. You know, further north, you know, in the Northern Plains, up in the Midwestern states, it's going to be predominantly winter weather problems. But to the south, that could spark some more uh, severe weather activity uh, throughout any of these, you know, troughs. But I cannot tell you the impacts, uh, the specific impacts, says you know where could see you know who could see severe storms if severe storms are even possible. We just know right now that the pattern is at least relatively favorable for unsettled weather, whether it regards to severe or winter. It's just unsettled. It's an unsettled pattern that we're, we're continuing into. It's why the thumbnails video is it's not over because we're seeing continued disturbances that are jetting out of the western states and moving eastward and that creates problems for uh, weather. So that's something we're going to be monitoring here 
And then, uh, of course, you know, we're going quite far out, but I I'm just showing you guys sort of the pattern here. Don't take anything that you're seeing in this image, for example, as absolute. This is a little bit of aggressive pattern. Sometimes GFS loves to print out these mega troughs, as I like to call them. Uh, here, this is a cold and maybe even severe look as well. This is a, that's a nasty looking thing right there. So, yeah, uh, let, let, let's, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. But you notice I was talking about that little ridge or that big ridge. It's not little by any means. Uh, it is definitely a big ridge. And you notice how anomalous the heights are in the southeast. And this is gonna be a this is gonna be a problem here. We have got a heat wave, a February heat wave in the South V. So we take a look here at the temperature anomalies of the GFS. You'll notice that a lot of the southeastern region, southeastern sector of the United States, is well above average. A lot of areas in the southeast, maybe up in the Carolinas, could see could see the first 90s of the year. That just shows you that that ridge means business. So. Uh, not saying you put your sweaters away just yet, especially further north you go, but it will be definitely warm across the across the southeastern states this week. Thursday appears to be the hottest day here, and a lot of areas could definitely see the first uh, 90s, especially in the parts of Florida on Thursday. So uh, colder air may try to, to sink in. You know to the 35 degree latitude but that's pretty much about uh, as far south as it goes but the southern states will likely stay a little bit toasty uh could we see some relief as far as this warmth maybe going into uh early the middle of march i can't tell you uh it's hard to say you know it does look like that we may see some relief from this cold but that warmth especially for the southeastern states is going to stick around for quite some time. There'll be brief shots of cooler air, but it's not going to be anything. It's going to be, you know, to to go like, wow, it's so cold, you know. <laughs> it's not going to be anything that's going to be written in the books like what we had in December before Christmas of last year. So that's just kind of the deal here. So that will do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you guys in the next video.